you know, this moment is great and all, but like, Asta, when are you gonna put two and two together, dog? That's your mama! Thank you to our $5 patron, Sin is Lancelot, and a big thank you to our $25 patron, The Mr. Greed. Now, before we have this review of chapter 326 of Black Clover, please do me a favor, leave your own list on the chapter in the comment section down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you hit that little notification bell so you miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, if you have a Patreon down below, you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be appreciated. Now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I got Pencil here, and here we are to review chapter 326 of Black Clover, which is known as Brothers. And speaking of Brothers, we open up with a Bomb Brothers cover page because G, like, Tabata was really just snapping, like, th this entire week. Like, he has that amazing, he, he dropped the latest volume cover art. He did the entire main Shonen Jump thing for this week, which is an amazing picture of D.U. Asta. And then you have this beautiful opening page where you get to see all of our Really, all four of our protagonists, minus Noelle. If, it's, it's weird. Like, I don't know. I guess she's been out of the narrative for such a long time. I'm wondering if Noelle even counts as the main protagonist. Because he really hasn't shown up. But at least four of our main protagonists right here. And you know, Asta, Yami, and Nock. And notably, they all have their assistants, except for Yami, who doesn't have one. Which is a testament to Yami's strength. I know he has a recent, you know, uh, Underworld amp. But still, like... You know, definitely still relies on his guardian spirit. We know that Asta definitely relies on Lieb. He couldn't be at all useful without Lieb right now. And we know not relies on his four little mid-level demons. But of course, Yami, he just be doing it all himself. So he's a big inspiration. This is also just really cool. I loved to see the different dynamics and how they all sort of fit into each other even if they are opposites like you have you know covering his eyes from the bright light that he represents but on the opposite panel right next to him asta whose eyes are clear and direct forward is covered by this like dark anti-magic moon and it works out because these two are opposite they're parallels they're brothers in that sense where they both have the those two opposing sides but of course they still mirror each other they're still equals in a sense showing off that rivalry and of course you have the dual set up with yami and Nock, where you have yami having this pure darkness moon that's solid and pure and just stands out strongly and then of course you have Nock, who being more of shadow being more dispersed has rather a dark moon just a pure moon in the background representing the shadow it's really really cool dynamics and i really like how tabata went out of his way to just literally just flex like the coloring here is insane too i love tabata's art style it it's weird, like, there's sometimes, like, especially, oh, the art style is beautiful in Chapter 2, but I, I, I find it weird whenever I want to place Tabata in terms of, like, where I put his manga art, because I really think he does shine, and he has a very, he also has that Seven Daily Sins effect where his art is going to be forever timeless just because of how good it is, and yet how it feels nostalgic and old, but at the same time it feels modern enough. I don't know, it's weird. I'm going to have to do a whole video talking about, like, manga art and specifically black clover art because i think it does very very good and seeing the evolution of black clover art is also just insane but <laughs> enough of a tangent on that let's hop right into the chapter itself where we get to see that um yeah this is the follow-up to the gamble and notably i like yuno's answer this is a really cool answer because as we see you know, he did take that punch for Asta, and he is just holding firm underneath his little star. But, of course, he's falling now, and Lucci's like, well, it'd be like that when it'd be like that sometimes. Time to die. And But the thing is, right behind him, since he's looking for, since he sees the star, he, he knows he's ready for a mix-up, right? Like, he, he's playing fighters right now, and he just got hit with an assist, he's in block stun, and he's about to get hit with a 50-50. Or at least that's what he thinks, but um, shockingly enough, he's getting hit by a four-way mix-up, where he's gonna get hit with a back, front, side, up, low, down, all-way mix-up, because both Yami and, Na and I love how desperate they look. It's, it's such a, it's, at least for me, right? Because I'm not used to drawing like unique manga art myself or art in general forget manga art just comic art art in general i'm it's very hard to portray certain emotions whenever i go to draw things that's why you always see my avatar wearing glasses because it's difficult but i love the way especially in yami's eyes like knock has a look of more so determination but in yami's eyes you can see just pure desperation like he is dying to kill lucy in this moment because he can tell the threat he poses and i think that's great it's amazing you can portray that like just through how hungry he he looks like the fact that you can portray that hunger in a simple image it's so much to the point that 
when these two come out, and I love how Nock is using his doppelganger effect with his shadow magic, and they're using the literal dying remains of Kid's playground to do this. The shadow, they both come out mirroring each other, meaning that both have access to Yami's dark magic, and in fact, they're both wielding a copy of the sword that Yami was given. I love how the image of them about to strike Luchi is so potent that even Melly is like, hold on a second, wait, we gotta go somewhere? But of course, he, they're just not that guy. And well... <laughs> And it's amazing, right? Because it's really a perspective trick, and I and I really like that because it's hard to do in manga, considering everything's splayed out in front of you on a page. You don't have you don't have camera work in manga, right? Because an anime can trick you with a certain look and make you believe something by having you locked in on one part of an image that they've drawn. Meanwhile, with the manga, it's played all in front of you. But the way that Tabata draws you to the top two panels, it almost makes you think for a moment that they managed to slash into Luchi. But of course, that instant pan down, the reveal shows that, yeah, uh, they didn't slash Luchi. Luchi slashed them. And the crazy thing is, right, once again, I it's very difficult to portray speed in manga. And this is one of the, one of the main things I'll give Oh, mangaka like Tabata, I'll give mangaka like Gege, I'll give mangaka uh, Horikoshi at times, he doesn't do it consistently, but when he does, whew, he'd be snapping. The ability to portray speed without speed lines. Like, you can just tell by the fact that Luchi is in the same pose that he was before they appeared, but you can tell by the upper two panels he struck them. He moved so fast that they could not comprehend what he did. He tore into both of their torsos, gutting them most likely, and yet returned his arms back to the same spot. The speed that is demonstrated there is insane. It is a, it is one of the best ways to portray speed that you don't do too often. Speed lines are good. You want to have manga in motion. That's another good way. But if you really want to portray like that insane gap in speed, like a, a gap in speed that is so large and drastic that it's barely comprehensible by human thought, you do that. You essentially skip panels. And I think that's really, really cool. Because it's like how you would... It's like skipping frames in animation. And if you want to make something look fast in animation, you skip frames. You make it so that it looks more choppy. So it like tricks the human eye into thinking, oh wow, they're moving that fast. But in manga, you do that by literally skipping panels. So the sight line is just not even there. I think that's amazing. Shout out to the bottle on that one. And of course, we get to see the Asta. He's like, what? And, uh, and I love terror terror once again tabata is just a he, he's gonna have to go up there like i'm trying to think he has to go up there from the hunger portrayed in yami's eye to the determination portrayed in Knox to the slight fear in melly's to the sheer terror on asta's face like it is and i love how asta he's not fast enough to really move or block or react at all but he's he's moving fast enough that his eyes just do that slight widen like the it's the realization of death <laughs> like it, it's those it's that moment where you have your entire life flash before your eyes like that's the thing like he he is experiencing the realization that this this is over he hasn't he, I, he, in this moment until the end of the chapter he has no hope everyone's down all the captains gone dark lord seke out of the picture his main healer gone and no one no one valid is left. No one here. We've already seen him overwhelm fate. Gone. Like, he, Asta has no hope. Yuno's down. Fox's down. Yami's down. So in this moment, you see the terror and realization set in on his face. And of course, Lieb is there too. And in this, it's this great moment where you just... It, get, it gives me back, like, those that initial introduction of Luchi. Because I'll admit, for a while, like, I'd say the past three or four chapters or so, Luchi, uh, he, he's been losing his luster, all right? Like, Melly's been talking back to him. He hasn't been able to kill a couple humans. He's been stalling a very long time. Like, for the supreme deity of the underworld, essentially, he's been, he's been lacking a little bit. But to see that fear being instilled in our main character, it's chef's kiss. It, br it brings back that, that impossibility that is very hard to capture with a villain when they have not been proving that impossibility to defeat for so long. So that's great. And of course... I love that the whole idea of your life flashing before your eyes. I'm assuming this is because they're merged in body and mind. So, but the interesting thing is, this only occurred when Lieb, when his, when he started flashing back in life, right? Because notably, unless I'm mistaken, yeah, I, well, Lieb is focused on failing Lucida. So maybe he doesn't see it, but at least from what the manga shows us, Lieb isn't getting a direct feedback to Asta's memories. Though I think he he may have gotten that in the past. I'm not sure, but at the same time, like this 
this whole memory link up wasn't a thing up until the point where both were on the verge of death. And notably, Asta sees everything that Lee went through in an instant. Lee's life flashed before his eyes, and of course, considering they are merged right now, it's flashing before Asta's eyes too, which is kind of insane. Really, I really wish it was a two-way street, but I think maybe Lee A already saw Asta's memories, or B, it just wouldn't be as impactful, considering this, once again, is an issue I sort of have with this whole Asta Lieb dynamic. Like, I know Lieb is supposed to be our emotional backing for the narrative, right? Like, this is this is what we're here for. However, at the same time, it feels a little bit strange that Asta really has no reason to fight Luchi other than he's fighting for Lieb, he's fighting for the, obviously, survival. But, like, it feels strange, right? Because it's, it's like Asta's detached. And, I, and I'll never forget that moment where Asta, where Lieb asks him, we need to defeat this dude, and Asta's like, yeah, sure, and he does it for him. It's not, Asta himself isn't really invested in this, he's just doing it for Lieb. And I know it's not, it's expected, Asta was an orphan, he never knew his mother, so it's obvious, it makes sense why he wouldn't have any emotions tied to Lucci, but at the same time, it's not necessarily a problem. Per se, it's not like an actual narrative issue, but it just feels weird to me. You give, you have this ultimate big bad final villain, and you have no real ties with our main character to them. It's a kind of a similar issue I have with My Hero Academia, up until a point, and I even say a bit now. Yeah, I still still say that. Like the dynamic between this big bad final villain and this and our main character, it's just not there. It's not tied in like that. So it's it's a little it's a little up in the air for me. But of course. Enough of me whining about character dynamics. Let's go to the fact that Lieb just feels guilty, right? Because his entire existence up until the point where his mother died and he was still in that Grim War was to avenge his mother. It was to defeat Lucci, the man who made him kill his mother. So, of course, him being put through all that he's went through, growing alongside Asta, achieving Devil Union, going through the Devil's Bargain, doing all this stuff, doing everything he could in his power to even scuff Lucci and to fail like this, Obviously, he falls into despair, and obviously he can't forgive Lucci for what he did, but he also can't forgive himself. And I think that is, that is, it, it, it's weird, right? Like, there, there are moments in manga, or in fiction in general, where it just, like, out of nowhere, it'll just, like, sucker punch you right in the emotional feels. I remember reading that, I was like, wow. Don't, like, and to be fair. I don't have a revenge plot going on in my life, but there are many times in my life where I feel like I failed at something, and I, you know, I can't get mad at anyone else but myself. Like, sure, there may have been someone who was better than me, but and there may have been someone who maybe have wronged me, but not to the degree that <laughs> Lee was wrong. But that moment of feeling angry at yourself because you yourself couldn't succeed at the one goal you had, like, that hurt. I don't know, and I think that's great. Like, it's such, it's, it's tying fantasy to reality in the sense that Sure, you may not be a person wielding the exact opposite to the way the world functions and being trapped inside a book working with some other dude. Like That may not be you, but every person out there has had a moment where they felt like they failed and it was only their fault that they failed. And I, that was really good. But of course, we get to see that in this mental space that they're having right now, Lieb and Asta, they're reduced to a very young age because this is this is their end, a beginning. It's it's weird. This is their end, so they go all the way back to the beginning. And Lieb is literally crying over the fact that he is the reason his mom died, even though it's not his fault because it was Lucci. He still views it as his fault, and of course he's breaking down in his final moments. And the thing is... <sighs> It, and I get it, right? Because Asta very clearly goes on to say, Leave. I don't know a thing about your pain. Which is, it's like, I wish, I wish, like, Asta could experience all the pain that Leave felt at that, in that moment. Like, this is going to be a very out there reference. But for my Kingdom Hearts fans out there, you remember in Dream Drop Distance when Roxas walked up to Sora, grabbed his hands, and just fed Sora all the emotions and suffering that Roxas felt? Like, 
it, it, this is kind of like a Kingdom of Hearts 2 opener, right? Like, we know Rox has gone through a story of suffering, and he merged back with Sora. But the thing is, Sora didn't know anything about that, so he just lived life. That's where Asta is right now. But I wish somehow, especially considering Asta just saw all that, and likely experienced all that in real time, I wish he would have had a 3D Dream Drop Distance moment, where Lee essentially, maybe even accidentally, it doesn't have to be on purpose, he just infused Asta with all the pain and knowledge. And we know Lee has thought and realized that Lucida is Asta's mom. Like, he knows that. So, I would love it if, like, Asta went through this whole, like, mental journey, in these, once again, in these final moments, to feel everything Lee felt, feel his pain, feel his suffering, feel that, so he could experience all that pain. And just like Sora did in 3D, keep moving. And to be fair, Sora messed up in that game. So don't do it absolutely. But in the way that Sora took in that pain, and then after he messed up, resolved to carry that pain with him, and then move on and grow from that, that would have been better than Asta being like, sorry, bro. I don't I don't know what's up with you. <laughs> Sucks to suck. However, I... And, like, it's it's all right. Once again, it's all right. You didn't have to do it. But I feel like it would have been a lot more impactful if Asta had that moment where he did, like, essentially merge. Like, he and Lee literally became one person. They both experienced each other's pain. And then it was Asta's determination from his past and all the lessons he's learned that allowed him to push through that pain and pick, pick Lee back up and say, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to fight through it. We're going to avenge our mother. You know, how, you know how powerful it would be if this chapter... I mean... <laughs> I'm kind of leaping to the end, but you know how powerful it would be if Asta ended that chapter with the idea, with instead of saying, how dare you kill my partner's mom, he said, how dare you kill our mother? That would have, that would have hit, that would have smacked, that would have, couldn't have it, I don't know. I, I wonder if that's an, it has to be an intentional choice by Tabata, right? Because it's a world of mad, you could have easily done that, especially since you went out of your way to show that Asta sees all of this. Like, this is something that he he literally sees on panel. Like, like, you could have done it. I don't know why he does it. But, of course, we get to see that Asta, he's still focused on the idea of lifting Leap up anyway. Even if he doesn't experience the pain, even if he doesn't understand it, he's still like, hey, let me be real with you, Leap. I was the only one who couldn't use magic. That hurt. I suffered for that. that, that I've been at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom because of that. However, that is what links us together. And your anger and sadness and pain, they gave me strength. So thank you, bro. And I love how when he says thank you, when he acknowledges that, he grows older, right? Like, he grows to a point where he is essentially start of, not around, a round start of series. And Lieb gets a little older. And we get to see that this this declaration that Asta is really lucky to have met him, this reuniting of their bond is what brings them back to their full selves. And he literally says, I have nothing, but let me fight with you. Let me fight for you. If we're together, we can do this. And I love how the recollection, the connection that they have, even if it wasn't through a literal hardcore memory link, the thing that brings them together is the fact that they were both born with nothing. But now that they are... Now that two nothings have come together, they have something. They are no longer alone. And now they can go out and fight in the real world. And notably, Asta in that moment, uh, and this must have all happened in an instant, because in that moment, Asta managed to react to Luchi's fist and flick his blade upward. And he ends the chapter with a very declarative, So what if you're the king of the underworld? How dare you kill my partner's mom? And... He bears his teeth. Well, no, he still only has one sharp tooth, but notably his headband falls, and we get to see him sprout a fifth horn. So, he's evolved. And that man got even more swole. And notably, well, I'm not deep into Black Clover theorism. I don't know. I, I'm simply not, unfortunately. It does seem, does seem strange, right? Because... This is as I read somewhere else. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I forget where I saw it. But now, Asta is the only person we've ever seen, I'm pretty sure, with five horns. Even Luchi himself, if you can see it in this very chapter. Luchi may have, like, a spot for a fifth horn. That's his third eye. Notably, even Luchi himself only has four elongated horns. So Asta is the first being, devil, human, whatever, to bear a fifth horn. 
and the most impressive part is where it's coming out of notably it's not coming out of like the top of his head it's not coming out of the sides of his head like it does with Lieb or even Lucci himself it's coming dead out of his forehead like as someone aptly called it a rhino horn like he's literally just popping out like that and that honestly makes me wonder what does that have significance like is it is there something because usually like a third eye an eye of enlightenment would be there and that's why i'm assuming Lucci has on his head like that that open gap is his third eye like to show his supremacy even more the reason why he is king of the underworld but instead of getting a third eye what Asta gains is a fifth horn so hmm i wonder how much of an amp is this going to be is it going to be valid because notably we see that in comparison to the start of the chapter and hold on we go to the end of last chapter if I'm not mistaken, if I'm going to go to the end of last chapter, he, jeez, last chapter was only <laughs> 10 pages. But the that's mainly because of the double spray. No, not even. That was just a short chapter. But the thing is, his DU is more complete last chapter as in comparison to the end of this chapter. But the difference is he's getting the fifth horn, even though the rest of his devil union is falling apart. So is he going to get stronger here? Is he going to stay around the same level? How much of an amp is this fifth horn? Because it has to be a decent enough of an amp. Because Luchi was swinging for a kill here. But notably, Asta is not only able to react to Luchi, which is insane, considering we how, saw, how fast we saw him at the very beginning of this chapter. We saw him blitz Yami and knocked. He managed to turn his blade and react to Luchi, but at the same time, he stopped Luchi in his place. Like, he didn't get pushed back or knocked away. He simply held him there. So the, the, the amp is crazy. So what, what does this mean now? Is Melly going to step in? Because, like, notably, if I'm Melly, the human, <laughs> the human experiment, it's gotten too risky. I don't know what the heck that thing is. Because that's got to be strange. Even for Melly, because I think Melly has four horns too. I think Melly does, in fact, Melly has the quad, I'm pretty sure. But I, I would step in, because like this is this is concerning. Even even if this could be a tool against Lucha, I may be like, whoa, whoa there, buddy. You shouldn't have that. <laughs> and of course, the whole thing is Asa shouldn't have more than two horns anyway, because where are these extra two coming from? So Asta, Underworld Lineage, who knows? But... Then the question becomes also on top of that, what is Asta going to do now? Because if he tries to fight Luchi, I still don't think it should work out. I still think he should lose, but who knows? Maybe he won't. I'm kind of intrigued. This chapter left me with a very, at least a bitter, bitter taste in my mouth because I feel like this was, if this was, if there was any time to finally give Asta access to the memories that Leap has in order to figure out that Lucita was his mother, this was the time to do it, and this was the declaration of our mother and not my partner's mom and this was the time to do it so i'm left a little bit bittersweet with that but i'm assuming tabata has a reason for that so i'm gonna trust him on that and obviously the art in the chapter is just she's like i can't even blame the chapter for not even being like super duper long and having a whole ton of white background like i can't even blame that because of just how insane the art is and of course the two color pages he had to come with the whole volume cover he had to create the whole show like the man was undoubtedly busy this week so i can't even knock him for that and I'm just excited. I'm very intrigued to see where this where this goes and what he's going to do now with this new power up. If it is, even if it is a power up, because who knows? This may be something bad <laughs> that could pop up out of nowhere. Because if his DU is falling away and instead he's getting a fifth horn, that could be an unhealthy mutation for Asta's body. So I don't know. A whole ton of things could go a whole ton of different ways. However, those are my thoughts on the chapter. Please tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit that little notification bell so you miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, do get a Patreon down below. I would appreciate any support you're willing to give. You can support me for as low as $1 a month. Now, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Lego the Pencil, writing off.